Hey y'all, it's Jim D. So I was originally gonna title this video, I pitched Adobe for a sponsorship and they were like, nah. But <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get more clicks probably if I make it a little bit more broad instead of just talking about my personal situation. And so instead we're gonna make this video about how in general you can handle rejection as a creative and then I'll use this Adobe sponsorship experience as an example. So that's what this video is gonna be about. And I'm gonna end by showing you all the pitch that I made to Adobe. Not only because it was fantastic, but because I'm like, I did not work on that pitch for that long, only for like six people to see it, no. Listen, monetize everything, all right? That's the biggest lesson. Let's go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. Y'all are the best, as you know, and I talked about that, okay? I made it clear in my pitch to them that y'all were the actual sexiest subscribers, okay? I did not mince words. It's really important to be yourself, no matter the audience. And I was like, I love Jesus, and my subscribers are sexy, okay? We can talk about it later if you want, but these are both the truth. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this video started. So my very first tip in how to handle rejection is focus on what you've learned or gained from the experience. On my phone, my screen, my background is all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So that's literally my mindset is literally everything in this world is working towards my good. Yes, I mean, I've gotten this sponsorship, but what did I gain from this experience? And so for me, with this particular experience, one, I got the experience of pitching in front of a major brand. I think of myself as a small YouTuber, even though I know truly everything is relative. And so major brands like Adobe that creates the software that I currently use to edit, that is a major brand, right? It wouldn't occur to me to pitch in front of them until I had at least 50K, if not 100K, if not half a million subscribers, because I'm just like, surely they would only want, you know, these major folks to be talking about their product. They would only pay them, you know? So this is something that I would have never on my own done, but being a part of the creator camp gave me this experience. And I guess I should clarify, so as a part of the creator camp, you get the opportunity to pitch Adobe for a sponsorship. To actually have these folks listen to what you have to say to actually give you meaningful feedback, and to know that these brands seem like, oh my gosh, so fancy. It's just people. <laughs> it's just people who work at a company. That's all, that's all all of us are, are people doing things. So it seems like, oh, I'm pitching in front of this major brand. I'm hopping on a Zoom and I'm talking about myself to six people who I've met <laughs> and who are pretty friendly. When I first joined the creator camp and they told us about this pitch competition, I genuinely wasn't sure that I was even gonna do it. One of the judges actually pointed out that many people get cold feet, they don't even show up. And that was really what made me think like, okay, like truly you have to at least try if you wanna get something out of this experience. I also got the experience of putting together an actual deck but have it be for me and my brand. I used to work in the nonprofit space, so I put together many a deck. All right, and I love doing decks. I love the design element. I love the storytelling component. I love picking up the photos and the fonts and making it this cohesive thing. I genuinely enjoy that and I've literally only ever done that for other people and for other companies. So just sit there and have complete creative freedom to tell the story of me and my channel, how I wanted to tell it. I didn't even realize that was something that I wanted. And at first it was like intimidating because it was something I hadn't done before. But once I got into it, I was like, oh, I love this so much. That felt really good to just create something just for you. And honestly, that was why I started YouTube in the beginning was because I am a creative person. I love doing creative stuff and I would get to do creative stuff in my job but there were always so many fingers in the pot and I was like I just want to create something that is pure. And to be clear I do think having additional eyes on something does make it better. I think if I'd actually showed it to somebody earlier in the process where I could have still like incorporated their feedback I think it would have made for a better and stronger presentation but it is really nice especially if you're used to like never having your own final creative say. Just make something that's just for you. And that's why I love YouTube full stop. You just make stuff that's just for you. And if people like it, awesome. And if they don't, that's okay too. Cause you made it for you. And if you like it, you're good. Another way I handle rejection as a creative is to actually focus on how this is still a part of God's greater plan. I genuinely believe every situation I'm in, every person I meet, every circumstance I find myself in is a part of a plan that is going to uplift me and uplift everyone else and make the world better. And so I'm not looking at things as problems or things that are happening to me, I'm like, oh, this is a gift. This is another gift that I've been given. Let me figure out how it is a gift. Let me figure out how it is that I want this thing. And honestly, from the very beginning, and this could be a lack mindset, but I think it isn't because I think it's actually an abundance mindset.
mindset is I didn't quite think I'd get it and here's why so in the beginning they said they tend to give it to smaller creatives so I think of myself as a smaller creative in the grand scheme of things but actually within this creator camp group there were people who were literally just learning Adobe Premiere Pro like I've been using it for years now I've made YouTube videos I have thousands of subscribers this was a program to help people genuinely develop their skills and get familiar and get comfortable with the platform and people were asking questions like what are the chances of me getting the sponsorship from Adobe if I only basically just started my channel and they said Adobe likes to give the opportunity to these smaller creatives and that's when I was like mm, I might not win this thing <laughs> because within this group I'm actually one of the bigger creatives which is a very interesting mindset shift if you're so used to thinking of yourself as small to be put in a group where it's like oh am I the big dog in this group with my 12,000 subscribers really it's very strange to suddenly have to like shift your position from the David to the Goliath if you still think of yourself as the David you're like wait a minute but also like if you think about what it means to get a sponsorship from such a major brand the impact of that would be so much greater for someone who is just starting and who was just like having that courage to put themselves out there versus me because I genuinely believe I am gonna get sponsorships from major brands like I don't have any doubt about that in terms of a confidence booster I'm pretty confident I got another sponsorship truly before this pitch was even done and I was literally editing my sponsored video it's the one in how I happen to still be single and packing that mystery it's genuinely such a fun ad thank you all so much for all the wonderful comments it's yeah I really enjoy making that but yeah I literally was like editing my first sponsored video and then had to stop what I was doing to then create this pitch for another sponsored video. So I already had that mindset of sponsorships is a part of my lifestyle. It is something that's gonna happen. This is my first one. I know more are coming. And when I think a lot about God's plan, like obviously I think about my role in God's plan, but God's plan includes all of us. I love the idea of someone being new to the creative space, getting this amazing opportunity and realizing for themselves that yes, they can 100% do this. They can 100% be successful doing this. And this being like an early sign for them that yes, they're gonna be okay. And I'm totally fine with this opportunity going to someone where that's the kind of impact that can be made because I know genuinely everything that's for me is gonna be for me and everything that's not won't and it's genuinely not worth stressing about it because the plan is a pretty good plan it's worked out pretty well so far so I'm not gonna start questioning it now so as I was working on it because I still felt called to work on it I was trying to think like I wonder why God wants me to work on this and so that process of creating something for myself I was like oh this is pretty great and I realized that the process of getting very clear and specific about who I was what my channel was about, what I stood for, my values were, what I was espousing with my content was really, really helpful because it bled into my personal life. So in the video where I talk about saying yes less and staying in more, I talk about my decision to not go to Europe for a month. And a big part of what helped me come to that decision to cancel those plans was the fact that I just spent <laughs> hours and hours doing this pitch deck and practicing it and saying the words that I believe we should do what we want when we want and not let anyone stop us. That I believe that we should be free. That I believe that we should be creative and live lives that inspire us. You know, we shouldn't be compromising on the things that make us happy. Repeating these ideas again and again, when I then found myself in a situation where I was asked to say, hey Jimby, what is a decision here that'll make you happy, that'll live into your values, that'll make you feel free, and what decision won't? It was then very easy to know what decision to me and I know that the Lord giving me the chance to remind myself of who I am what my values are and that I'm gonna be okay and I'm divinely protected all that good stuff really helped me stand in the truth of my life and the final way I handle rejection as a creative is to be creative all right it's to turn everything into art everything is content y'all it's all content I got my ass beat in Malaysia when I was on remote year you know what I did I made a video about it I handed someone a camera and I was like take a photo because I already knew I was gonna use that for content I served Surgery, content. Chip in my head, content. Quitting my job, content. It's all content. It's all content. Moving to LA, content. Moving back to DC, content. It's all content, all right? And so in the pitch, you'll see I talk about the promotional plan I had for that video. When I was making that, I was like, listen, we making a video about this regardless. Y'all know dang well. You see how I didn't curse there? I'm proud of that. You see dang well that I am going to. <laughs> I had someone leave me a comment that was like, so how do you talk about Jesus and then in the same sentence be using curse words? And I was like, cause God loves me, all right? Don't be questioning my faith. <laughs> Point is, whether or not I won, whether or not I lost, I was gonna make a video about this. A video about how you handle rejection is equally, if not more powerful than a video about continued success. Because as we said, that stuff's gonna come. But also, the rejections are gonna come too. And I think it's so important to show the process on a creative journey. And I think that's also why you all enjoy watching these videos, because I'm gonna show 
you the process. It's not all just landing cool programs and getting cool sponsorships. It's also like trying things, people being like, that was cute, but it wasn't good enough and being like, Thank you, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. I've learned something from this. I am gonna turn it into a YouTube video because I will still get my AdSense dollars from this experience. But like, it doesn't need to be that you stop what you're doing because someone is just like, no thank you. And actually, you can turn it into more opportunities because who knows what'll come from me making this video, right? Hopefully, you all will get some value from it. You'll hopefully feel good about your own creative journey because you'll realize that we're all in this together. We're all doing our best. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, but we're just gonna keep going and keep creating. So that's my my main hope for this video is that you all feel good watching it, but this also will add to my channel. I think of my channel as an archive, a library of content. It's not about just any one video, it's about the whole library. So that when people come to my channel, they're like, okay, is this a person who I, this, her body of work, you know, is something I want to be a part of. Every single video you create and every single piece of art you create is another chance to reach people and to possibly grow and increase your impact. And that's what has me really excited is that I'm thinking about doing this kind of like explosion of content Content, with the idea that literally every single time you create something, it's like buying another lottery ticket. Turning what you experience into art <laughs> is an amazing way to turn every experience into something that feeds you and feeds the world. You know, I could have just gotten rejected, been like, okay, and then never <laughs> talked about it again. But instead I'm turning it into a video that you are hopefully watching and enjoying. I'm giving myself another chance to do that pitch, you know, cause I was super nervous doing it. And just to show you all that like, yes, we out here, we can do it. I literally have 12K subscribers and I got to pitch Adobe. Of course I can do, I was trying to think of another major company and I could only think of Walmart and I would not, I was gonna be like, I would not pitch Walmart, but then if I show up in a couple of years then Walmart ad, y'all gonna be like, what was that you said? And you know, they really did hurt a lot of small businesses with their business model. And also people like died in fires in Walmart. But we all, not me trying to defend Walmart, not me ending this video with me trying to defend Walmart in case they become a future sponsor. Can you imagine? Do you think y'all are gonna sell out as creatives and talk to the creatives in the audience? Do y'all think you're ever gonna sell out? Is working in a capitalist system inherently selling out, you know? Like, I have Amazon links in my description box. We know how Amazon be operating. They be doing straight slavery over there. And here I am with the link in the bio. How does that work? Okay, but also I got my cell phone and they've mined them chips and stuff, basically also using slavery. So basically at what point is slavery okay? We're going off the rails. We're going off the rails this video. I'm gonna stop now. I'm not gonna defend slavery for phones or Amazon or Walmart, but the link is in the bio <laughs> of all the products that I've purchased off Amazon. And if you purchase them too, I get a very, very, very minuscule, minuscule amount of money. I hope you enjoyed this video, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you did, subscribe to see more. Let me know in the comments how you handle rejection. Do you handle it or do you let it take you down? Do you even let yourself get rejected by putting yourself out there? We know a lot of y'all don't be doing that. And I'm gonna make a video about that, all right? Cause y'all need to stop playing these reindeer games and start creating. I know you're tired of talking about creating. I know you're tired about talking about it. Don't you wanna actually make something? I know you do. And you can and you will, all right? So we're gonna talk about that in a later video. And without further ado, here is the pitch that I did for Adobe. Hi everyone, my name is Chimdi Hazier. I am a 30 year old full time creative and child of God, currently based in Washington, D.C., but I'm actually hopping on a flight to Budapest tomorrow for no other reason than I want to, all right? And that's real important to my brand that you do what you want, when you want, and you don't let anybody stop you, assuming you aren't hurting anybody, of course. But that idea of freedom is really core, and on my channel, I inspire others to live lives that are full of creativity and joy and learning and growth. And I have an Instagram. I'm following but YouTube is my main platform. Twice a week I share my journey of living into my authentic self to show others that they can do the same. This includes everything from elective eye surgery, traveling abroad for 12 straight months, shaving my head bald, and quitting my 9 to 5 job to become a full time artist. Now we can debate this if you want, but I'm pretty sure I have the dopest, most supportive, and arguably the sexiest community of subscribers on YouTube. This is a subscriber who became a friend. When I met her, she offered to give me my first Brazilian wax. And yes, I did make it into a YouTube video, of course. My YouTube audience is primarily women and people of color. I talk a lot about spirituality, so I have a lot of people of faith. About a quarter are between the ages of 18 and 24, and half are 29 to 34. The majority are US-based. My audience tripled to 12,000 
subscribers as a result of my quitting my job series and many of my new subscribers are professionals who aspire to their own creative dreams. They subscribe to me because I don't just talk openly and vulnerably about living a life of creativity and freedom, but I'm showing them that it's possible. My idea, so I'm constantly given compliments on my energy and my editing. I wanna make a 12 to 15 minute video where I share three tips for editing high energy videos with Adobe Premiere Pro. By leveraging B-roll, cutting out filler, and using effects, anyone can create videos that are a joy to watch. The format for many current Premiere Pro tutorials is pretty standard. It's usually a person talking and a screen capture. Educational, yes, very entertaining, not so much. But we know what it's like to edit with Premiere Pro. That curiosity of trying a new style, that joy when you discover the perfect effect, that frustration at trying to communicate your vision, that divine calm when you get so focused you completely zone out. It all combines and builds and then crescendos into this deep satisfaction when you export that final video. It was once an idea and with Adobe's help it was made manifest. I'll communicate that experience and how I edit this tutorial, leveraging the b-roll, leveraging the pacing, and leveraging the effects tools while I teach them. For promotion, I'll post the full video on YouTube, a 30 second clip on LinkedIn. On Instagram, I'll do both a feed post where the caption will focus on how the sponsorship has further validated the pursuit of my creative dreams, and a three slide Instagram story featuring video clips. Finally, on YouTube, I'll create a follow-up to my Creator Camp video to share even more of the lessons I've learned from this particular pitch and sponsorship experience. So, why me? I am completely self-taught. I didn't go to film school, I didn't go to art school, and yet here I am thriving as a full-time artist. That's because I went to the school of editing on Adobe Premiere Pro for 16 hours straight. I went to the school of editing until 6 a.m. because this really matters to me. This is the real school. This school taught me that art is worth dedicating your life to, that art is worth taking risks for, that art is the language we all speak, that art is our divine right. Being a creative professional is not just for someone else. Creativity is not just for someone else. Creativity is for me. Creativity is for us. Creativity is for all. Adobe gets it. I get it. Y'all get it. Thank you.